Hello guys, it is Gate of Theories here, and guys, if you have been keeping up with the dumping ground recently, you will know that there have been a lot of people leaving, and with that comes a lot of leaving episodes. But the question is, what is the best leaving episode? Well, today we're going to be ranking every single episode of the dumping ground where a character leaves on a tier list to find out which one is truly the best. Let's get into it. But before we go any further, please make sure that you click that red subscribe button down below and have your notifications turned on so that you get notified every time we make any brand new dumping ground videos. Firstly, let's set some ground rules. I've tried to go through every single episode of The Dumb Ground and find an episode where a character leaves. However, it's easier said than done. I might have missed some. So if I have, make sure that you let me know down below in the comments. The issue with this is so many characters don't get leaving episodes. So remembering which ones did get leaving episodes and which one didn't is kind of a struggle. And just to make it clear, we are only ranking episodes that characters actually leave in. If a character somehow disappears at the end of a series and then comes back later, it's happened to many characters before, we're not ranking them returning. Some characters we've had leave, come back, leave, and they just actually have never had a leaving episode before. We're only ranking the episodes where characters actually leave. Now, what are we actually ranking? We're going to be ranking the episode itself, how good the episode is, but also how well this ending wraps off this character. How well does it come to a close this journey for this character? Because an episode can be really, really good, but have a crap ending for the journey of the character or a journey and the ending for the character can be really good, but the episode can be really bad. So they kind of need to go hand in hand to get high on this tier list. And I'm also not gonna be ranking the characters here. This is purely just based on how well it wraps up the character's journey. So without further ado, let's get into the tier list. So here we are, like I say, I hope I've got every single episode here and we're starting off in chronological order with the Dumping Grounds first leaving episode, What Would Gus Want? Series one, episode five. Fun fact for anyone who didn't know, this is actually the highest rated episode of the Dumping Ground ever. And I think it might be the highest rated episode of the franchise ever, beating any Trace Speaker Returns episode, the story of Trace Speaker, any My Mum Trace Speaker, Beaky Girls, all that sort of stuff. This is the highest rated episode of all time, so clearly it's got to be good. If you want to find out any more about that fact, there'll be a link somewhere to the card up there to a video that I've made. So, what do I personally think of this episode? Well, I think as a way to round up the character Gus, it does it nearly perfectly. It shows the struggles that Gus has with leaving the dumping ground, and we knew he'd have them. He likes everything in a very structured, formulaic way, and it's really interesting to see how he survives without Mike, but also how Mike will survive without him. The inclusion of uh, the first ever gay characters in the show, and just the episode as a whole, is just really fun to watch, and it's really interesting seeing people like Tyler question, can I please have these foster parents if they don't? And there's a reason why it's the most highest rated episode. It is just a really fun episode and I wish the Dumping Ground episodes were like this nowadays. So S tier by far. Next we've got the barbecue of course Lily's leaving episode. This one I like and I think it rounds off Lily's character well. However I, I just think it's a bit of complaining. Like I say I'm not gonna judge uh, the character Lily here because that's not what this tier list is about but this whole episode is very much I'm gonna say whining is how I'd put it. You've got this drama between Lily and Carmen. Lily's leaving, Carmen doesn't know about it. She then finds out. It's all a bit awkward. It's fine, it's just not really my cup of tea. And I don't think it's that great of an episode either. So I'm gonna say probably C tier. Next we've got the episode where Frank leaves at the end, which has faced the music where he reunites with Liam. Now Frank, of course, has had a big journey in series two up to this point. He has been out on the streets uh, in the episode Finding Frank. And in this episode, he goes and sees Liam. And to be honest, I think in terms of what we're looking for in this tier list, this episode does it perfectly. S tier because this whole episode is literally about Frank's journey and what better way to show Frank's journey and for Frank actually having the courage to leave the dumping ground yet again is through bringing his best mate back. Liam, it's brilliant to see how Frank just grows on a personal journey throughout this episode and the episode is great because we've got Liam back. It also relates to Liam's story. Tick two boxes, S tier. It's a perfect episode and a perfect ending to series two. Next we've got Johnny's episode, Dragon Slayer. Now I think this one is really good as well because this episode 
is brilliant for just rounding up the character of Johnny. I'm gonna say it's A tier. I don't think it's as good as these ones, but it is really good. The episode itself is decent enough. We've got the character Keith coming back. There's a few other things that happen and it's, you know, it's a decent enough episode, but what it does for the character Johnny is really, really good. Since we've known Johnny, since the beginning of Trace Speaker Returns, we've always known he's been a bit of a loose cannon. He gets annoyed at so many people. We've seen him fight with Bailey and they finally make up in this episode. And this episode shows us why. We finally get to meet Keith, the person who Johnny had to grow up with, who's kind of formed his personality into getting really angry at times. And seeing Johnny finally face on against Keith is just amazing, a perfect way to round off this character. Next we've got Harry's leaving episode. Now I've added two episodes into here because technically he leaves and then he comes back and then he leaves the series later. He's, he's kind of a special case Harry in terms of that. And none of these episodes are really that amazing. I'm not gonna lie. I think Harry's first leaving episode is better because you've got the whole like uh, vibe between Floss and Harry. There's of course the two Jeffs and that emotional moment where the Jeffs are saying goodbye to each other. But then that's kind of all undone. And then Harry's next leaving episode is actually about Sasha. It's not really about Harry whatsoever. I love the fact that we've got Annabelle Davies and Warwick Davies together. That's amazing. But it's not really about Harry. And for this tier list, we're ranking how good they round off the characters. And I don't think they round off the characters them well. The episode themselves, they're fine. They're nothing really special. So I think it's gonna go C tier. Next, we've got the episode where Sammy leaves. Now, if you've forgotten who Sammy is, I don't blame you. He was the kid who was in for about three episodes, but he got a full-on leaving episode. He got a full-on episode that centered around him climbing up on the roof for all things. So quite a dramatic episode to leave, and it's fine. Like I say, this character isn't really special. He was only in for three episodes. We don't really have much of a journey for him, and half the episode focuses on bringing in two new people anyway. So, B tier. It's an alright episode. Next, we've got one of my favourite episodes. Series 4, episode 19, One for Sora. And it's, of course, Carmen and T leaving. Out of all of these characters who we've had leaving already, we've had Lily, we've had Johnny, we've had Gus, we've had Frank, we've had Harry. All of these people who are leaving, they are iconic characters to this franchise. Carmen and T arguably are the most iconic characters to come out of Trace Speaker Returns and to go onto the dumping ground. Obviously, probably the most iconic are Tracy and Liam. The next two I'd say are Carmen and T. Having these two leave together is just amazing and this episode encapsulates it so well because what it does is it shows their friendship and it shows the struggles of their friendship. And to be honest, Amy Leigh Hickman, Mia McKenna Brees, they are such great actors in this, seeing the emotion and the crying because not just them crying, all of the rest of the actors are crying. Their family is kind of being split apart with this. I'm crying while watching it. It is such a good way to end off these characters and to see them go out on a high and to see Carmen like say goodbye to Jodie in the way that she does, it's so emotional. I think it's one of the best rounding off episodes and it rounds off these characters so, so well. So for that reason, it's gonna go in S tier. Next, we've got the series five opener and the two-parter for Bailey leaving. As individual episodes, I don't think they're incredible, mainly because I'm not the biggest fan of the storyline. I'm not the biggest fan of Dexter in general. Having a full two-parter kind of focus on Dexter is kind of annoying. However, I do appreciate what it's doing and it does something amazing for this character of Bailey. In terms of episodes that actually round off the journey of the character well, this episode does it spot on. When we finally see Bailey go off and fulfill his dreams of becoming a footballer, when he turns back, cries, looking at the dumping ground, gets me emotional every time. For that reason, it's going to go in A tier. The episodes themselves are fine, but the way how it rounds off the character is just amazing. And also, this is the episode where Mischief leaves because, of course, Mischief goes with Bailey, just making it even more emotional and just even more great. Next, we've got Farvel. By far, the best ending episode for any character. Kazima, you've done it. It is just so emotional and so amazing because what it does is it pays off that finale of series three where we finally see Kazima reunite with her dad in the episode Refugee. And now she's been waiting for so long for her dad to return and finally she leaves and it is so emotional. That final scene at the airport between Mei Li and Kazima where Mei Li just says she's so proud of her, it rounds off Kazima's character so well. And when Kazima finally gets to the other side of the airport and sees her dad and then sees her brother, the emotion that we see 
the thing that this whole character has been leading up to ever since we first met her in Finding Frank when we found out just kind of little glimpses of what her past was like and now she's finally returned back to what life was like before the streets. It's just so emotional. I absolutely love it. I cry every time I watch it and by far I think because of that it is the best leaving episode for any character in The Dumping Ground. Next we've got The Switch. I think this one's quite clever. The actual leaving episode and the way how it rounds off the twins journey in The Dumping Ground it isn't the best for, I'm not gonna lie, but as a clever idea for an episode it's decent. I think it's gonna go uh, top B tier. What happens is of course Floss decides to get one of the twins to pretend to be the other twin and uh, we get a whole like twin mix-up which is really quite funny. Uh, so it's, it's a nice fun episode I'd say. Next we've got Ryan's leaving episode A Million Ways to Say Goodbye. What a character and what an episode to leave. What's great about this episode is it shows us the reason, similar to the way I was talking about Johnny, how Keith kind of showed us the reason why Johnny is the way he is, we finally get an answer as to why Ryan is the way he is and he does not hold back. We finally get to meet Ryan's mum and it just fills in so many of the blanks of why Ryan has acted the way he has over his time in the dumping ground and he goes ruthless on his mum and he blames his mum, he gets really emotional, he shouts at his mum saying, you are the reason why I am like this. And I think, what a way to round off the character. It is such an emotional moment. I think it's gonna go A tier. Next we've got Charlie's leaving episode, Letting Go. And I think this one's just a really sweet episode. It's a nice time. And I do really love just the emotion at the end where Alex and Charlie, they've kind of thought, right, okay, we're gonna live together. It's gonna be a nice time. And then they can just wake up and they realize, actually, we can't keep doing this. We've got to make a decision. We've got to make a choice. And Alex, you can't stay with me. And Charlie's ending message that she sends off to the dumping ground saying, please look after Alex. It's really sweet. It's really emotional. I will say as a way to round off the character, it doesn't exactly round off her journey, but I'd say it kind of just says, right, okay, now we're moving on to the next step of her journey, and it's the most logical way of doing that. I'd say it's probably a high B tier. I have fun with it. I think it's a really nice and emotional episode, uh, but it's nothing like groundbreaking, I'd say. Next, we've got the episode where Alex leaves, and it's awful in terms of for Alex. The episode itself is fine. However, there is just so many things going on. The episode itself is called Mighty Mike Milligan, so it's not even about Alex. Alex just goes back to his family, which is a nice ending for the character. However, it was kind of resolved in a different episode and then now he's only just leaving in this episode. So it kind of just forgets about him. We also have Katie appearing. We've got Mike about to leave as well. It just doesn't really focus on Alex whatsoever. So for that reason, it's gonna go in the D tier. Speaking of which, we've got the three-parter for Mike. I've spoken about my issues with this in the past. I am so glad that Mike got a three-parter for his ending episode. He deserves it. He has been in it since the beginning of the story of Tracy Beaker. So from 2002, right now, I think this episode came out in 2018 off the top of my head. 2018, so he's been in it for my mental math is all for 16 years he's been in it for. It's been 16 years since he was first in it and now it's his leaving episode and what an emotional moment. The only issue is this three-parter completely ruins those last 16 years. For some reason we decide to break all of the Mike continuity, all of the times where Mike has had those emotional moments with each and every care kid, especially Tracy Beaker herself, and now suddenly he has a secret twin brother, now suddenly he's leaving because of his mum, Part of me thinks that it does make sense, the other half of me thinks Mike deserves just way better and the fact that he leaves Ashton Ridge alone I think is a nice moment but where's Tracy Beaker in it? I know her voice was there but if we were ever going to bring Tracy back, I know we brought Tracy back for Mike's wedding, Tracy should have been here when Mike was leaving the dumping ground and just this three-parter itself is just not that great deserving of Mike. He deserves way better. This story that they created for him just retcons so much of Mike's canon and Mike's past and loads of awesome Mike speeches from the past that now just don't make sense because he has a brother and he was in care and it just it ruins his entire character really. So for that reason, it's gonna go in the D tier as well, which is really annoying because I love Mike's actual bit where he leaves. It's so emotional, but the way how it rounded off the character, it does it wrong, it retcons everything and the episodes themselves 
are not that great. Next we have the two part of Trouble in Paradise and Go Your Own Way from series eight. If you've been a fan of the channel for a long time, you will know I cannot stand the Dumping Ground series eight. It is my least favorite series by far. But this episode is very good. This two parter, I will not lie. I think it's gonna go top A tier. I don't think it's good enough to go S tier, but the way how it rounds off Tyler's character and the way how it rounds off Jyla, Jody, and Tyler being a couple together is just absolutely amazing. We have this whole two-parter episode idea of where Jody and Tyler have been finally found out that they are together. How May Lee and Scott did not realize they were together, I will never know. But this whole journey of Jody and Tyler that we've had going on since Tracy Big Return Series 3 to them finally getting together, their secret has now been found out and now they've got to escape and they've got to run. And it is a perfect way to end off the characters. But what I love most about this is not just the Electra uh, cameo, which is obviously makes it amazing, but the fact that at the airport, that emotional scene where Jody and Tyler decide to not break up but Jodie decides to stay at the Dumber Ground. She gives Tyler her necklace and Tyler decides to leave and go and follow his dreams. I think that's a perfect way to end off not just this couple, but Tyler as well. The episodes as well, considering they are in series eight, are very, very good compared to the other episodes. I just think it rounds off Tyler's character so perfectly and there's nothing more iconic now than seeing Tyler wave off goodbye like his, he is in this photo here. It is just amazing. Next we have the episode where Chloe leaves. I'm not gonna lie, this one's quite forgettable. It's just, I don't really remember much of it. I've seen it a few times and that tells you, but I really don't remember much of it. It's really quite forgettable. So for that reason, it's gonna go in the C tier. And next we have Sasha's leaving episode. If you thought Mike's annoyed me, this one really, really annoys me. For that reason, it's gonna go drop dead D tier. Sasha Bellman just deserves so much better. The joke of it is, the episode where Sasha basically left and then at the last minute decided to change her mind, sorry, not sorry, from series six, that rounds off Sasha's character so perfectly. If that had been her leaving episode, it would have been probably A tier because we see the emotion, we see her using her vlogs, we see everything can just fall apart and her getting angry and I think it's a perfect way to end her character. And then they decided to say Sasha stays, which I'm so glad they did. Sasha staying for another three series is, is perfect. However, this ending episode just comes right out of the blue. Suddenly we're in a random episode in series nine. Now you'll notice that lots of these characters, the really big ones like Bailey, like Mike, like Jodie and these other ones who are about to see, they get two parters. And I do think that like Carmen and T should have also gotten a two parter, but that's a whole other thing. They get two parters for their episodes leaving. Sasha is a character that should have got a two-parter. If she didn't get a two-parter, she should have got a finale episode, like Ryan did, like Frank did, like Kazima did, for example. She doesn't even get that. She gets a random episode in the middle of series nine, which is an all right series, and she randomly goes off with this random artist and singer who she's found. Like, it doesn't round off the character whatsoever. It's right out of the blue. She doesn't actually have a proper ending goodbye. Now, maybe that's because of coronavirus that was around when they were filming, but she just literally just leaves and there's literally no emotion whatsoever. It's really annoying. Sasha Bellman, Annabelle Davies, they deserved way better than this. And the episode itself is really bad. So for that reason, it's gonna go in the D tier. Like why couldn't they have made a two-parter and made Sasha have a proper good ending episode? And now we've reached series 10. And there's some good ones and there's some bad ones. Let's start with Jodie Jackson's leaving episode. Or should I say, she doesn't actually leave in this one. She's already left and we just didn't get to see it. That is the most annoying thing about this two-parter. We get a two-parter for Jodie's final few episodes and technically they're not even Jodie's leaving episodes because they did that off screen without showing us. This character has been with us since Tracy Beaker Returns. She is the only thing that is still connecting to Tracy Beaker Returns. She is the main character of this show. She deserves so much better and instead her leaving episodes are combined with introducing a whole new bunch of new characters from a different care home and we don't actually get to see her properly leave. It, it is awful. I'm going to say D tier. It is so, so annoying. Why didn't we get a proper episode for Jodie leaving? Even the end of series nine, where we see Tyler coming back, if Jodie needed to leave there and Kingsley's dead, that rounds off her character brilliantly. If they needed to let her leave, 
make her leave at the end of series nine. This series 10 two part are opener where she's randomly just becoming friends with Bonnie. She returns after coming back from university and then has a fight with Mei Li, like, which it has no stakes to it. The fights that she's had with Mei Li in the past were way higher stakes than this one. And then she goes out for the rest of the episode trying to find uh, where Bonnie and the rest of the characters have gone and they've fallen down a well and she helps get them up and then she officially leaves. H how does that summarize this amazing character that we've had for 10 years now, who's had such character development, we've had so many great two-parters about her, how does that round off her character whatsoever? It just doesn't. It's awful. I just... Uh, she just deserved so much better than what she got. Uh, we didn't get to see her leave. And she just randomly appears again and then is gone. The only good thing about this episode is when she smiles off to the camera. And that's it. That is it. There is nothing good about it. Jodie Jackson deserved way, way better. Next, we've got Birds Leaving episode. Now, I actually thought the uh, first part of this was really good, where we see Bird going off and meeting his Nigerian dad, just out of coincidence. It's slightly unrealistic, I will not lie, but it's a decent enough episode, and it rounds off the character really well. If that had been where the episode where Bird leaves, that would have been amazing. But then they decided to do a sneaky thing and make it into a two-parter, which is, you know, fair enough. It de Bird deserves a two-parter. However, the second part has nothing to do with him. He leaves in the first five minutes and then the entire rest of the episode is about Clem and it's a fine episode, but it doesn't round off Bird's character whatsoever. If it had just been one episode, it would have been amazing, but it's not. So the second episode really just like does not do it for me. And they didn't wrap off Candy Rose and Bird. What was that all about? What was the point of like hinting at us that Candy Rose and Bird might get together and there wasn't even a conversation between them when Bird left. It was just disappointing. So for that reason, I don't know, like the first episode is really good. It's gonna go C tier, it's, it's mid ground. Get rid of that second part and this would have been probably high B tier, I'd say. But for this reason, it's gonna go low B tier. Next, we've got Candy Roses leaving. Now you'll notice how I've added in series 10, episode seven, the real Candy Rose. And then a few episodes later is the one where Candy Rose actually leaves. And it's because they basically act as a two part. If you watch them side by side, you would get the impression that it's a two-parter. And I think this one does really well. I think it's probably gonna go high B tier, this one. As a way to round off Candy Rose itself, it is amazing. We finally get the reveal of why Candy Rose changed her name to Courtney. We've had glimpses of the reason why. We've had like, you know, a few hints as to why it's so serious. This shows us why it's so serious. We get to see Candy Rose with her parents and we realize why she had to change her name to Courtney. And the way how she leaves and she ends is she gets kicked out and moved to another care home where she has to change her identity as well. It is so serious. It is an amazing ending to this character and this era that we've had with her. And it just shows how incredible this character development has been. The fact that when we first met this character, she was literally like a whole bright pink sparkly person because she had to be, because she had to change her identity. And now we get to see the main reason why, because her parents are evil. The only issue that I have with this is I really wish this two-parter had been the main ending two-parter and we'd got to have seen two episodes with Candy Rose's parents. Unfortunately, it only being one episode and having to share with Mei Lee, it doesn't work as well. So for that reason, it's gonna go top B tier. But for rounding off the character, considering the way they rounded off Jodie's character, which was absolutely awful, this is done really, really well. It is one of the most effective endings, I think, of any character on this show. And finally, we have Mei Li's ending, the two-parter. And like I say, it's the same episode as Candy Rose's one, but we're ranking the way the characters are leaving and how the episode corresponds to that. And I don't think Mei Li's was that great. I think it's gonna go high C tier. And it's such a shame because Mei Li deserves so much better. There are so many creative ways they could have got Mei Li to leave. Thinking about the way they got Mike to leave, I know I didn't like that, but at least it was slightly creative. This one, mainly in the first part, is just really angry, which fine, okay. And then in the second part, it's because she wants a nine till five job and is deciding to then leave the dumping ground because of it. It's just a bit low stakes, to be honest. And then the rest of the episode focuses on Candy Rose. 
the fact that they have to share an episode together makes it, I think, less impactful for Melee leaving. And Melee just kind of leaves out of the blue. It's not very effective for dealing with her character. So for that reason, it's going to go in the C tier. But anyway, guys, that is the end of this tier list. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, make sure that you smash that like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Guys, let me know down below in the comments what you thought of my tier list. Do you think I've placed these episodes in the right place on this tier list? If you want to check out this tier list for yourself, there'll be a link down below in the description where you can go and check it out and do it yourself. Uh, but let me know in the comments what you think of all these episodes, all of these leaving episodes, and let me know which one your favourite is and which one your least favourite is. And anyway, guys, we've been here at Gate of Theories. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.